I love my Linux system as it is, but I also enjoy customizing it, swapping in new software, ricing out the software that I'm actually using, and just doing all of that sort of stuff that anyone who uses a desktop Linux system eventually gets around to doing. But there is one place on the internet that takes this to a new level. That place is Unix porn. And when I scroll through this place, I start to realize something. Everything on this subreddit looks exactly the same. Sure, there are some weird exceptions where you have people running like KDE that looks like Mac OS or Windows. Those actually do look pretty cool, but, but for the most part, it looks exactly the same. I guess we do have some exceptions like this one, but apart from that, just spend five or so minutes scrolling through here and you'll start to notice a trend. Sure, the color schemes will look different, but you will notice something very similar about every single thing on this subreddit. So generally, it's going to be a tiling window manager. And weirdly, though, when they take a screenshot like this, it's going to be in floating mode. But then when they have a floating window manager, let's say they're writing something like KDE or GNOME, they're going to make it look like a tiling window manager. However, when it is tiling, there will almost always be window gaps, and those window gaps will almost certainly be way, way too large to actually be functionally useful. Some in the range of like 20 or 30 pixels, where you're actually taking up a massive portion of your screen. And because you have to show off like how much of a Linux nerd you actually are, there will be a terminal on the screen and that terminal is going to have transparency and in a lot of cases actually has blur. And you get bonus points if you have a color scheme that matches your wallpaper to the point where if you switch to a different wallpaper, your system would look absolutely horrible. And there's also never any work actually being done in these screenshots. You just have windows placed in the perfect location to just make it look good. And this isn't me complaining about Unix porn. If you want to go and rice out your system and go and do that, that's perfectly fine. But it made me realize something. Have we just perfected the look of the tiling window manager? Like, sure, you can make little tweaks to make things look a little bit different, but... The general style is exactly the same across every single one of these screenshots. And that's not to say that it's a bad style. This is basically how I run my tiling window manager as well. I have window blur, I have gaps, I very frequently use floating windows, not in my videos, just because I don't really have much of a use for that. But when I'm doing stuff and want to have like a window that doesn't break my layout, it will usually be a floating window. And this is why I just generally don't do videos on racing, even though I've had a couple of people request videos that actually may make decent videos. For the most part, I just don't think there's really anything to say that hasn't actually been said a thousand and one times before. But weirdly enough, on this subreddit, people seem to live in like this weird void where the rest of the subreddit doesn't actually exist. Going into any of the posts on this subreddit, you'll realize people are saying the exact same comments, saying things like, this is so original, it's so clean, it's so practical, it's so usable. But everything on the subreddit falls under that exact same category. And it gets even weirder when people post newer iterations of their rice, which look exactly the same as the old version, but have like a slightly different color scheme. Now, once again, I'm not saying that you shouldn't go and rice out your system. If that's what you want to go and do, and that's how you want to spend your time, be my guest. I've just never really spent time looking at this world and seeing like how much everything looks exactly the same. Oh, also bonus points if you have an anime wallpaper. That's also going to get you some points as well. Now, the video suggestions that ask me how to write certain applications, I think there is still some value in talking about that. Maybe it's not as well documented as it actually could be. But I've had people ask me to do like an overview of my system rice and... It would take about maybe a minute to actually do because I'm not actually doing anything that special. So with my terminal here, this is how your terminal is supposed to look. The color scheme I'm running is just matching it up with the 16 colors inside of your terminal. All of the 16 colors in your terminal actually are named. So this is red and this is light red. This is green, this is light green. And those are actually named in the documentation. So if your colors don't look like that, I've talked about this before, but you're sort of just running your terminal with an incorrect color scheme. You can do that if you want to, it's just going to mess up the documentation. And things like, say, how I've riced awesome. I have literally spent 
maybe 10 minutes customizing awesome. So I set a different wallpaper because I didn't like the default one. I went and hid the uh, bar up the top here for the windows so it doesn't show things like an X icon, the window name, things like that because I don't need that. The window name is going to be along the top anyway. And I've also changed the like border color and the color up here from like another gray to the gray that I'm using, and that's that's literally everything. And anything else like Vim, I've probably just downloaded the color scheme and used that. In the case of Vim, I am using VS Code Dark because VS Code Dark is just objectively the best theme. With my system, I tend to focus on functionality over style. Obviously, style certainly does have a place, but at the end of the day, if the application I'm running doesn't do everything I need it to do, I don't really care how good it looks compared to the competition. If something else does what I need, I'm going to use that instead, even if it just looks absolutely horrible, it has a horrible light theme. If it works, it works. And I think part of that comes from the fact that a lot of the software on my system gets swapped out very, very frequently. So if I needed to go and test out, I don't know, a new text editor, a new web browser, a new terminal, things like that. I don't generally spend the time to actually go and customize the look of them unless the look is just so horribly, horribly bad that actually gets in the way of me using the application. And I absolutely have had situations like that. For example, I tested out a file manager that had this really bad light theme that just made me not like what was going on with the application. All I did was swap the background color and the foreground color, and it just looked so much better. And I felt like I could actually give it a reasonable look then, because otherwise I was just not happy using it. But there are other places where style more concretely affects the way the application actually works. Let's say we have a terminal file manager, for example, and we have a single pane file manager like, say, NNN. Comparing that to something like LF, which actually is a multi-pane file manager, you realize that having those multiple panes there actually gives you the ability to do things that weren't actually possible on NNN. So things like, say, navigating through the parent directory while you're in the child directory. Or how about a graphical file manager that has a grid-based file system versus one with a list-based file system? Obviously, at the end of the day, you can still select the files, but the way you actually go about selecting those files can be vastly different and very much do affect your workflow. Or how about graphical elements that block the usability of the application? Let's say you open up a help screen and it spawns directly over the usable area in, say, a file manager, and you can't actually use the file manager until you actually close that screen. I still like to bring up customization in my videos, even if I don't go like super in-depth depth into it because a lot of people actually do care about that and want to make their program actually fit in with the rest of their system. So letting people know that's a thing you can do actually is going to provide some value to them. I don't think I will ever understand why people actually enjoy posting their rice over on somewhere like Unix porn, but that world just isn't for me and I can accept that it does exist. I think it's really weird to describe the whole Linux idea as a community because really it's a bunch of sub communities all sort of grouped together under this one operating system like no one would describe windows users as the windows community i guess you could describe mac os users as a mac community but that's because mac os is more of like a big apple ecosystem because if we look at Linux, you have the people who enjoy ricing, the people who enjoy Linux servers, gaming, who do YouTube videos. And while there is a lot of overlap between these different sub-communities, I don't think there's really anything that connects them together besides their operating system. I know this was a bit of a rambly video, but I hope you got something of use out of it. I think that's going to be everything for me. And before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim Donald, Logan Michael, Andre Mitchell, Nathan, David, Carl, Will, Brennan, Chica Bento, Jamie, Joseph, Josh, Michael, Peter, the Stephen T's through Tony Shishar, and all of my two dollar supporters. If you'd like to go and support work, them links down below to my Patreon, subscribe, star, leave a pay, all that sort of stuff. I've got my podcast Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays where I live stream twice a week, and I also play and I also cut out YouTube shorts. I'm not cutting that. And this channel is available over on Odyssey. That'll be everything for me, and I'm out.